welcome to another episode of Lisbon Investment Society's podcast, Crunch the Numbers. My name is David Tite and I will be your host for today as we dive into the world of finance. In this episode, we'll talk about the work of an asset management company, the impact of the pandemic on the behavior of investors and what new investors should know before getting in the stock market. Our guest is the president and co-founder Vitalis, our partner, Abraham Hernandez. Hello, Abraham. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, David. Okay. Perfect. Um, uh, welcome, welcome to our show. We are uh, very pleased to have you. Uh, so that we can get started, I'll just ask you: um, Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you very much for for inviting me. Um, well, I can tell you about myself. I've been working for almost one for 30 years now on pensions and pensions investments. Um, I graduated in actuarial science a long time ago, and I started a company doing consulting work for pension plans. And this was back in 1992. And I've been working on that ever since. Um, I became the president of the pensions section of the International Actuarial Association. Now I am the immediate past president and I still uh, volunteer for the association where I am member of the nominations committee and the strategic planning committee of the International Actuarial Association. Uh, so well, my life has been on, for devoted for pensions, social security, and investment of pension plans and other long term long term investments. And so uh, today you are here as a representative of Vitalis, our partner. And um, about that, as an asset management company, uh, what does your daily work consist of? Um, well, it 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 has different angles. One is uh, specifically on investments. Is uh, one is to to review companies, do fundamental analysis um, of companies around the world, to look for to look for opportunities, um, understand about uh, regions, microeconomic landscape, um, and also about different sectors where opportunities lie, and how things are evolving around the world. Uh, so one is specifically on finding these opportunities. Another is reviewing, I mean, and monitoring our portfolio. Um, one, from the perspective of, of how companies are doing, um, what, uh, if there's any news that can affect the price uh, or evolution of a company, and also from a risk management perspective, uh, to see what's going on around the world and, and know we, we need to do something about about the portfolio. Uh, another is talking with clients. There's a lot of uh, talk with clients, understand their needs, understand the con their concerns, understand the nature of their obligations in order to help them uh, with that. So you really need an, a broad understanding of the of society in general, right? So you can uh, apply everything you you see and on the news. And you know, to, to this continent, context in specific, it's really impressive. Right, and 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 also this this thing. I mean, uh, these investments are not for the sole purpose of investing. Uh, the, the the purpose at the end is to pay for some obligation, or to pay for something. In the case of uh, of an individual, people save for some purpose, not just because. Um, so we need to understand that purpose in order to help the client um, to understand which risks uh, they can take and when they need the money, etc. Well, um, related to with this pandemic, uh, what has been a trend in the investing behavior of your clients? I mean, I would say it, the, the um, behavior has been fear. And of course, when something, well, I mean, one, because of the pandemic, so uh, people are afraid uh, of their own of their own livelihood, 
but they are afraid of changes that have been made in society. And of course they were afraid in, in March when the stock markets plunged. So um, the constant I would say is, is fear. Uh, and yes, that uh, I mean, towards, uh, towards investing, they are concerned. They, they are afraid of what may, may happen. And, and of course, in some cases, surprised of what is indeed happening with stock markets, which have returned um, to historical highs. Right. I, I ask this only because um, I, I, I'm trying to see what uh, is the, the general behavior of a clientele, because on the stock markets uh, uh, and on the news until March, it seriously plunged. Right, but since then we have seen a bull behavior uh, across all, almost all industries, and um, it's quite uh, it's quite curiously actually to to see how people who want to save want to react to this pandemic. But um, so, how have you been handling this trend? I mean, in in, in our case, uh, and. and that, that's where a lot of uh, communication with clients come is, um, I mean, we are still doing what we ever do. I mean, understanding markets, uh, keeping calm, uh, having these uh, long-term strategies, uh, of course, protecting the, um, uh, the, 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 the weakest uh, parts of the, of the portfolio at some point, we did sell some investments that we deemed too indebted or, um, or, too, or too risky given the, the current situation, uh, irrespective, irrespectively of, uh, of short-term valuations. Um, but or, or other than that, I mean, we tried to keep calm. We tried to stick to our principles and that has paid off. So clients are, are happy are happy with that. And then as, as, as of the behavior of the market in general, um, I mean, investors are being forced to take risks. Uh, investors are being forced uh, to buy more stocks. I mean, nobody wants to put their money on the bank and pay for it. So, I mean, now the safe investments is that you can safely say, you are losing money, so so people are taking their chances and going to the stock to the stock markets, irrespectively of valuation of, of those stocks, with the idea that well at least they will preserve on the long term um, purchasing power because uh, um, companies sell things and that things will have value. Um, from my perspective. That might be too risky, and not only risky, but um, in some cases, uh, I mean, it, it's just a path to, to lose money on the long term. I think some valuations are indeed unsustainable, and people will, will, will get um, bad surprises from that. That is our my thinking. I, mean, I, 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 think, I, I think this in general, but of course there are specific companies where still opportunities lie. And from my understanding, those aren't the only risks you take, right, when investing. Since you are based in Mexico, you surely trade in foreign markets. And when doing so, what are your biggest concerns? Well, I, one, um, the company is based in, in Mexico. I am based in Lisbon. Right. But, and, and, and the company in general is, is, is international in its nature. And what is happening internationally is many things are changing, especially specifically geopolitically. And that is a big, um, a big shift. Uh, so we will see changes in the relationship with, between uh, the United States, China, and the rest of the world. Uh, Europe is a kind of uh, torn in between. Uh, in between these trade wars. And I believe is that Europe's response has been a bit slow. Uh, but on the other hand, they're doing what they can. And uh, finally, they are doing some things. Um, 
So this change in the geopolitical landscape will eventually affect companies and, and markets. We are seeing um, a very rapid uh, digitalization of, of companies and now of the economy as a whole. And with, with things like this, uh, possibilities of uh, video conferencing, in, in general, I think now digitalization is affecting us uh, everywhere on how we how we work how we purchase how we communicate uh, how we interact so that that will be a big shift and it's it, it's not that it, it's not a concern it is a fact so it's just the kind of things we need to to take into account when deciding uh, where we invest right. and how we invest and continue on that topic on uh, digitalization so because of that, in the past few years, it's becoming easier to invest in the stock market uh, with uh, lots of applications and people using bots to buy stocks. And there are so many gurus marking their get-rich techniques that many beginners tend to lose money at first. Mm -hmm. So what do you think a beginner should know and expect before investing in the stock market? Well, I mean, lesson number one, and we should never forget, there is no free lunch. I mean, there is no way of making money without risk, especially now. Years ago, you could just put your money on a bank deposit and have a five or seven percent return with no risk. Now that is impossible. So anybody, anybody who says you can make money for free is lying. And people should be aware of that and keep away. Now, if you understand the risks you're taking and you're willing to willing and able to take those risks well there are, again there are opportunities where you can make money but you need to under to clearly understand um which are the drawbacks which are the risks what are you doing with your with your money but because for certain there are no guarantees uh, to make money i mean to, to get rich fast it happens you can also buy a lottery can also go to the casino um, but then there you know you're taking risks it's the same with the stock market there's no free lunch right and in this case usually in a stock market if someone is winning big time there's probably someone losing big time as well so they just don't market that part right uh, that is true in in the short term yes. in the long term Markets are not necessarily a zero sum game. But yes, I mean, on the daily basis, whatever one wins, the other one is losing. So, uh, just to. And, and, and well, and somebody is taking a commission. So I would say it's a, it's a negative sum game. <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, just to wrap it up, um, and for uh, our colleagues who are graduating this year or finishing their masters, so what are firms like yours looking for in a candidate? Oops. Um, first of all, curiosity, I would say. Curiosity is important. I mean, to, to be willing to understand what's going on, to be willing to understand what, how a company makes money. To, not only to understand, sometimes it's, uh, I mean, to go and find out this this question so um, I mean I praise much uh, curiosity of course um, hard work be willing to understand that you will not become I mean rich from one day to the other uh, know to be patient um, and keep focused I, I would say of course I mean it's I mean of course a good a good academic uh, background an understanding about finance, but I, I give that for granted, especially uh, people uh, from, from ISEC and NOVA and these kinds of universities, they have a, a very good background. So I, I, I rest assured on that. Right. And out of curiosity, uh, just how much do you value uh, activities outside of the economic backgrounds? 
like uh, sports or volunteering, belonging an association, for instance. Yes, that that is that is very important because it shows a specific concern, and they are concerned about others. They're concerned about society. They learn to, um, I mean, to do teamwork, for example, when playing sports, and also, I mean, I, I was, um, I am a former swimmer. I used to swim on on the national team in Mexico a long time ago when I was younger. Uh, so yes, I, I can understand that that certainly helps on focusing on a goal and working hard to achieve it. And again, you understand that it's not from one day to the other. It takes it takes hard work to achieve those goals you, you plan ahead. So I certainly uh, like when when somebody has been sports or other or other activities. I would not say it is a must, uh, but it certainly helps. It helps that people want to experiment on other on other areas. In the case, for example, of my children, there's a, a rule at home. They all, besides doing well at school, uh, they um, they need to take up an instrument and a sport, and then go whatever they want with that. It's not that they need to become uh, champions or professional uh, musicians, but um, but that that helps them uh, throughout life. Uh, thank you so much for, for our talk, Abraham. It has been really insightful. Uh, I really look forward to, to speak with you another time. Uh, thank you so much for coming. It will be my pleasure. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.